Aloha everyone! In today's video we're going to talk about the Harley-Davidson Softail Slim, the 1000 mile service, what it entails, and how much it costs. Welcome everyone, uh, like I said earlier in this video we're going to talk about the 1000 mile service on this bike. Harley Davidson Softail Slim. This is a 2016 model in the denim black. And I'm going to go down the list. I actually have the invoice and we'll go over the total cost because I know that's what y'all want to know at the end. So everyone, here's the invoice we're going to be going down. I'm going to go over kind of everything they did to the bike and then uh, I'll talk about the cost at the end. All right, so I got it done at uh, down at Cycle City, Hawaii, which is Harley Davidson on Oahu. It's the only one here, official Harley Davidson store. And uh, that's where I take it because that's where I bought this beautiful bike from. And I uh, got the extended warranty when I bought it and everything. So it only makes sense to take it there, right? All right, everyone. And here is the invoice we're going to go down. I'm going to just kind of briefly talk about the things they've done to the bike and uh, ultimately how much it cost. And I'll give you a little breakdown of each item. All right, guys. You can see it's not too much of a big list or anything. But, uh, you know, factory directed 1,000 mile service. So... You hit the 1,000 mile service on this bike, and then from there you go to um, intervals of 5,000. So the next one's not due to 5,000 miles, and this bike only has 1,600 miles, go figure, right? So I'm sitting good there. And, you know, it's recommended that you go once a year and get the oil change, and maybe just an overall checkup. But uh, really, you don't need the full service done until 5,000 miles. All right, guys, so back to this. Uh, also, you know, they look for warranty issues found during the servicing, and they double check the VIN and look for recalls. So that's cool that they also do that. So the good news is there's not a lot of things they do and it's not that expensive. It's actually less than I thought it was gonna be. So first off, they went over and they did an oil change. So you know, you got the quarts of oil, they charged three quarts, it was like $30. Not too bad, right? Um, and then, you know, then they add another quart with the formula. I guess this is like an additive or something. I don't know, I'm not a maintenance junkie. Um, and that was 20 bucks. Uh, oil filter, uh, super premium black. I guess, and a gasket, of course, to do the oil change. So that was $75 for the total oil change. That's actually not too bad. Uh, then labor's where they get you guys. So the 1,000-mile the service itself to go over the bike, that was $217. And then they tighten the spokes, if equipped, yes. As you can see, this bike has spokes. Da -da -da -da. And they sit and they go through every one and tighten them, however you do that. I'm not an expert on maintenance, like I said. I'm sure it's not that hard. Uh, but the spokes were, as you can see, $49.50. Thanks, guys. Um, basically, what they did in the end is they changed the oil. Uh, they did the 1,000-mile service uh, where they go over the entire bike, uh, each joint, uh, make sure that the bolts are tight, um, you know, that your battery cables are still good to go, the wiring, spokes, like I said. That's an extra charge for these kind of bikes that have spokes. And uh, test the overall generic feel of the bike, check the engine brackets and mounts, and uh, you know, check it for some like abnormal vibrations on their test drive. And that's pretty much it. Uh, they also did something here on the steering column. I'm not really sure what they did, and I'll show you guys. So sometimes I can be a perfectionist, guys, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but little things annoy me. If you look at the cat eye console here and follow it up, you can see the Harley logo here. But look here, see how my hand is straight up the cat eye console? But look at the handlebars in the Harley emblem, see it? Harley Davidson, but it doesn't line up guys. It like hits right here on the E on the Harley. Now here's what happened. Before I took it in for the thousand mile service, I am not joking, it was perfectly aligned because that was one of the things I looked for. I mean, you just notice like, Boom, straight up the ignition switch, the Harley logo and the uh, speedometer, tachometer, and then boom, that little logo, which I like, by the way, right there on the Harley. Um, as you can see, it's like the cat eye console was shifted when they did something with the steering column checking it, but it's not straight anymore, guys. Look at that. I, this used to be centered. So whatever, little nuances, I noticed that. I just had to go on a tangent because it bothers me, but I let it go. I mean, as you can see, boom. So that's one little thing. So if you get your thousand mile service and your steering columns, you know, not straight, I guess you'd say. I didn't notice till like the next day, of course. Uh, let them know, have them fix it. It's you're paying for it. All right, guys, and back to the list. Uh, we'll keep going down. Engine oil filter replace, we talked about. 
They also change the transmission oil, they flush it and replace it. Flushing, of course, is a lot more expensive than just having it changed. Uh, they drain the chain case, adjust the clutch, lube the cable, set the free play, and added fluid and sealed up. So, clutch cable, pretty good uh, little resistance there on these Harley clutches. A lot more resistance than my sport bikes. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. They check all this Titan good stuff. And then down here, the shifter is a, it is a uh, heel toe shifter, which I do love. Um, they check all the linkage and they check it to make sure nothing jarred loose since you bought it brand new and all that good stuff. Also on here it says they uh, check the rear drive belt and service it. As you can see here, Harley this Harley has a belt, it's not a chain. And it just comes around back through here and down. And they just check the belt for any wear and service in the free play. -in. It also says that they uh, check the air cleaner and uh, they, you know, they change out the filter, all that good stuff. There's the air cleaner. I actually like this. I like the way it is. Just got that little intake. The 2018s, they changed it. It's like a big circle. I don't know. I just don't like the 2018, guys. I'm glad I have the 2016. And finally, it says they load tested the battery. They check it, make sure it's got enough amperage and volts and all that good stuff, and it was good to go. And continuing on, they also inspected the charging to make sure the battery charges, which it was good to go. The multi-point inspection all over, you know, like I said earlier, they check all the bolts and the mounts and make sure there's not abnormal vibrations and somehow they got my steering column off-centered. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... They check everything, a good once over, you know, I think that's pretty good. Um, gives you that reassurance that I bought this bike new, I rode it for a thousand miles, and uh, now there's, you know, nothing jarring around, none of that good stuff. And finally, they end up with a test ride, so they can ride your beauty around the block and rev it and all that good stuff. Like, I like to say the scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where they take the uh, old school Ferrari and go jewel riding. The car hops and you see them right behind them peel out of there and they go for the joy ride you know that's what i always imagine when someone takes my vehicles or bikes for test rides like yeah sure i'll take great care of it mister all right and the final damage drum roll please if you didn't see it earlier in the video when i was holding up the paper grand total subtotal 369 plus 26 dollars in sharp supplies thanks guys parts labor other for a grand total with tax of 387.28 not too bad overall you know the joke is hd harley davidson stands for hundred dollar so um spending 387 for the thousand mile service i didn't think that was too bad uh again this bike is a 2016 harley davidson soft tail slim in the denim or matte black better known as um you know, the only thing I've got added onto it, but it's pretty much stock. There's a couple little things. I'll point them out in case it's the first time you've seen my bike. I did purchase the uh, front engine guard in black, as you can see. I think it kind of makes it look mean. I don't know. I really like it. It looks good. And it kind of comes over the front of each uh, moon-shaped foot floorboard, footboard, whatever you want to call it. So it looks pretty good. Also, I added this guy, the heat deflector shield. And man it freaking makes its money uh so you don't burn yourself at red lights i literally one time even wearing jeans sitting at a red light down in waikiki uh too long the lights are down the traffic's bad you know all that good stuff i burned the inside of my leg on this engine right here but this little heat deflector it looks like it's stock and it comes with the bike because it is the harley davidson it was a hundred dollars by the way a little piece of plastic on each side it bolts down perfect heat deflector i love it best purchase i ever made for this bike the other thing i bought is this two up sundowner seat as you can see it's awesome because it gives you a backrest the stock seat as you can see here in the upper left corner um um it just it sucks there's no other way to put it. it's like sitting on cardboard uh but hard as a rock um it looks cool no practical use though so that's why i keep the two up seat also as you can see i have the fold down passenger pegs one on each side I usually keep them up, of course. Um, you know, I kind of don't like the way it comes in the middle of the pipes like that. But what do you do, right? I mean, it is what it is. Speaking of the pipes, I do like these pipes. I think they look good. Shotgun offset style. The 2018s, as you can see in this picture, I don't like it because they come down and they cut straight right here. And I just don't like the way it looks, guys. I wish they'd have left it the same. It just looks good overall. I just like those pipes. And they sound great for stock pipes. I'll get to that in a second. And then, guys, I added the Harley-Davidson swing arm bag, as you can see. Um, 
The only thing bad about this is it did get scraped right here, guys, because when I take those left turns and I guess the low rider, it actually scraped it, um, which sucks because it's the real deal. Harley was expensive, but for not having any storage space, it works. That's the only thing I got to say about that. And finally, I bought a little ram mount, U-mount there. Uh, it works, you have the ram mount here. You can see your GPS, your phone, all that good stuff. And that's about it. That's all I added to the bike, guys. So on this gray, kind of rainy day here in Hawaii, as you can see, guys, not great for riding, but at least the rain held off long enough for me to get this in. Here is a beautiful 2016 Harley Davidson Softail Slim. And now we'll get to what everybody's been waiting for, the sound of the pipes. Even though they're stock, I think they sound great. And here we go. All right, everyone's favorite, the startup. And the bike is warm. It sounds kind of quiet at idle, but revving it sounds pretty good. Love that back pop, guys. For stock pipes, I think it sounds pretty good. So there you go, guys. 2016 Harley Davidson Softail Slim. If you like this video, please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. This is your first time visiting the channel. I appreciate all my subscribers, and I do respond to all comments. Go back and check all my other videos. So with that, uh, on this gray, dingy Hawaiian day, uh, you guys take care, and until next time, aloha! Damn.